Yeah. Thanks for the invitation, first of all. And you're going to change gears now from clinical trials to a more earlier um, uh, stage on the drug development. So I'm going to talk about these kinetoplastid parasites um, and the millions of people affected by the disease caused by these parasites. So I'm not sure how many of you here in this room have heard about kinetoplastid parasites and the disease that they cause. Uh, but I'm pretty sure most, if not all of you, have heard about neglected tropical diseases. So the kinetoplastid parasites, they cause three of these diseases. So Chagas disease, human African trypanosomiasis, and leishmaniasis, these are three of the tropical neglected diseases. Uh, and they are all the three caused by trypanosomatid or kinetoplastid parasites. So in total, there are 17 NTDs and they affect 1.4 billion people. That's a fifth of the world's population. So it doesn't really make sense to have neglected, you know, naming all these diseases. And the reason why we have neglected is because these diseases affect people living in poverty. So there is no economical interest for the big pharmaceutical companies to develop drug against this disease. Um, well, fortunately, there are a number of uh, institutions, not-for-profit, and academic centers that try to fill this gap and address the issue. And one of those is the Center for Discovery and Innovation in Parasitic Diseases, which I'm a member of. So we're an academic center located in UCSD, the Skag School of Pharmacy. Uh, Dr. Jim Carroll is our executive director, and he's also the dean of the Skag School of Pharmacy. Uh, and uh, in our motto, I mean, we're deeply involved in research, of course, education and awareness. So we currently have nine disease models, all caused by parasites. Uh, and we go all the way from the very uh, beginning of conceptual how to uh, discover a drug against this disease up to the preclinical phase. So it's from the selecting of a target up to just before trying the, a new drug in, in humans. Uh, we're also highly collaborative, so I, I call it almost an uh, open space uh, for research. As you can see here in this map, there are more than 25 dots, and each one would represent a, a collaboration that we have. And they are both with academic groups or also with uh, pharma industry. Um, so that's pretty important. And now a bit about our technology. So we have built uh, in the Skag School Pharmacy in the fourth floor one screening lab. This is a biosafe level two laboratory, which allows us to deal with the parasites. Uh, and there is a screening area there. So we have a, a screening platform that is equipped with top-notch instruments. So this would be exactly the same setup you would find in pharmaceutical industry. Uh, pretty much the same instruments that we have. So these allow us to, to screen uh, tens of thousands of compounds against this disease per week, which is pretty remarkable. Um, so some of the disease models that I'm particularly involved with are the ones caused by the kinetoplastid parasites. So sleeping sickness or a human African trypanosomiasis there in the left, uh, it currently affects about 8,000 people in the African continent. Uh, if left untreated, it's fatal. Uh, Leishmaniasis, is, it affects about 2 million people worldwide, and we're going to have a talk in this afternoon uh, by another member of our group, Dr. Laura Isabel Macau, so I'll skip it for now. And Chagas disease affects about 7 million people uh, in the world, and it's the leading cause of heart failure in Latin America. So I think this gives a good idea of the impact of... And of moving up due to the you know, global warming. Well, yeah, it, it actually always have been here in the United States, but now people are starting to describe cases of people infected here. But it's a problem even in the United States, yeah, of course. Um, it's caused by a parasite called Trypanosoma cruzi. Uh, and we have a, a vector, it's a kissing bug. You may all have seen this bug here. So the parasites are present in, in the feces of the bug. That's interesting. So while the bug is doing the blood meal, uh, it defecates. And when we scratch the parasites that were in the feces, go into the wound and go into our body. And these, uh, these infectious form of the parasites, we call it trypomastigotes, they're very good at infecting cells. So they can invade any type of cell in our body. So they go in, they differentiate into this round shape 
uh, cells, they replicate, and then they differentiate back into the infectious form, the trypomastigote, they burst the cell, and they reinvade another cell, and that cycle will go on for the first six to eight weeks after the person is infected. We call yeah. this acute phase of the disease. It could be asymptomatic or it could have some mild symptoms like flu, flu-like symptoms. Uh, and then our immune system will start controlling the disease. Then you're gonna have very few parasites in the blood circulation. And you can live 10, 20, 30 years without any symptom. Most of the people don't even know they have the parasites. Perfect life. Unfortunately, about 30% of these people would develop the cardiac pathology. And about 10% of them would develop a digestive syndrome. Both of them would lead to death. So when you think about how we should, you know, uh, develop a drug, uh, how should we do this? What, what stage of the parasite we should target, for example? So obviously we should target the stage of the parasite we have in our body, so the intracellular mastigotes. So that's one of the things we did in our lab. We can do this infection in a micro well plate. So we can generate those trypomastigote infectious parasites. Uh, we infect myocyte cell lines. We put this in a, in, a, in a plate and we incubate these with the compounds we want to test. So then we have an automated microscope that takes pictures of what's going on there. So in the end, we have a bunch of images. And of course, we cannot just go back and check by our eyes. So we develop a software that translates all these images into numbers that we can use to classify how the compound is acting against the parasite and also against our host cells. So this is what it would look like um, a result of a primary screening. So we have here in the y-axis the activity against the parasite and on the x-axis uh, we have um, activity against the host cell, so number of the host cells. We can clearly see three clusters of dots in this map and on the top left it would mean 100% of activity against the parasite, so we're killing all the parasites, but a very low number of whole cells, which means those compounds are just cytotoxic. They're killing everything in the well. If you see here the bottom right, uh, we have compounds that are not killing the whole cells, but they're not doing anything to the parasites either. So these are not interesting for us. And on the top right, we have then our heat phenotype. So these are the compounds that kill the parasite and keep the cells very happy and healthy. So applying this approach, we have, for example, screened a library of natural products. Uh, so why natural products? Actually, two-thirds of the drugs that we take nowadays are either a natural product or were inspired in a natural product uh, structure. So it makes sense to explore this chemical space. So we had a very interesting collaboration with a group at UC Santa Cruz, uh, Dr. Roger Linnington. He assembled a library of marine-derived natural products. We screened 3,020 prefractions, and we ended up identifying 33 individual compounds uh, that target the parasite. It turns out that six of them were very similar. These were cyclic lipopeptides, and one of them had even a very interesting potent activity. 40 nanomolar activity to, to eliminate the parasites. So we're, we're right now trying to test these compounds in an animal model of Chagas disease. Uh, another interesting project that we have is in a collaboration with a pharma company. So it's a, a classic case of public-private partnership. So we work with uh, GNF Novartis. We screened part of their library and we identified a new class of compounds with activity against Trypanosoma cruzi, and this was recently published at the beginning of this year. Um, one other approach that we take is in silico tools to optimize drug discovery. So this was again a very interesting project in collaboration with a company called Collaborative Drug Discovery and their SI, uh, SRI Internationals. So we started with 7,569 molecules, uh, and our colleagues at CDD, they developed one Bayesian machine learning model to try to find which one of these compounds would have more uh, chances to be hitting the parasite, to increase the likelihood to, to get uh, hits against Trypanosoma cruzi parasites. So they selected 99 molecules for us to test, so that's what we did. 
We got a very high heat um, identification and confirmation. And in the end of this process, we chose five compounds to test in the animal model of Chagas disease. Four of them actually had uh, quite good activity against the, the, the parasite in the mouse model, and that's remarkable. Usually we get about 10%, so in this case it was 80. But in particular, one compound called pyrinardine caught our attention. So after only four days of treatment, we were able to eliminate 85% of the parasites in the mouse. So this was pretty remarkable. But not only that, turns out that the pyrinardine is already being used in, in humans to treat malaria in combination with artesunate. So that's really special. And nobody ever tried these against Trypanosoma cruzi. Uh, it turns out that we can move probably this drug directly to patients skipping the clinical phase one because mm -hmm. we know about safety of this compound. So that's really exciting. Um, and just before I finish, I want to mention about two other projects that I think are well aligned with the SAGE um, mission. So these are two projects that uh, I'm, I was involved. One is uh, a very interesting exercise with a startup called SOPADIS. So I led a team with two grad students from Stanford and one from UC Berkeley when I was at UCSF. Uh, and our challenge was to develop a sustainable business model to come up with a drug against Chagas disease. So that was a very interesting project uh, with Steve Blank, um, was about two years ago. And the other project for those of you interested in education and social impact, um, I, I, I have this project called Ciencia na Escola, translating this to English means science in school. So once I, a week, I connect with kids from Brazil, from underprivileged uh, elementary school, and I talk and teach about science with them, and I mentor their teacher to do some experiments as well, uh, like DNA purification, paper chromatography, and this has shown to be very transformational experience, so I'll be glad to talk about this too in, in our breaks. Uh, and to end, I'd like to finish with this African proverb, knowledge is like a garden, and if it's not cultivated, it cannot be harvested. So I invite you all to water and fertilize this uh, garden of knowledge together. Thank you.